Welcome to Wagered on Tilt, everyone. I am T, and today what I did want to talk about is a distribution called the Weibull distribution and a log normal distribution. Now, you can read about this information in some of Andrew Mack's books, as well as realstatistics.com, and there's some really great information that really breaks this down really well. Andrew Mack provides you some spreadsheets that you can use for a version that he is using it for. So what I'm going to cover today is a version that I have used, uh, roughly used at least, for doing some preseason bets. So there was a bet that I found that was saying, will any player throw over X amount of yards within a single game in the current regular NFL season? So let's just say the line's at 450. I want to see what is the probability of any quarterback, and I'm just going to stick with quarterbacks because it's unlikely that a tight end or wide receiver randomly is going to throw a 450-yard game, but what is the probability that that quarterback is actually going to be able to throw over that many yards? So we're going to go ahead and generate some random bogus data for this, and then we're going to walk through how the Weibull distribution works and the log normal works. Now, you will notice in this video, though, I will discuss that, you know, some of the information like the alpha and beta within a formula is backwards within Microsoft Excel. I read up on that a little bit more. It's because it's actually wrong in Microsoft Excel, which is why you're going to have to transpose those numbers and it'll work. So let's go ahead and stop talking about this and get into the spreadsheets. All right. So like I said, we're going to pretend that there's a bet out there for any player to throw over 450 yards in a single game. So there's two ways we can do this um, that I know of. We can use a Weibull distribution or we can use a log normal. So first we're gonna cover the Weibull. And here, this is all fake data. This is just information that I made up using a random formula within Excel. So these are not any quarterback's real information, but I did say, you know, put random between 150 up to like 480, I believe, and just generated a bunch of random numbers. So now within the Weibull, we're gonna need an alpha, we're gonna need a beta, we're gonna need to know how many records there were, we're gonna have to be able to sum something up over here, uh, and then we're gonna need the MLE. So in here again, we have the passing yards. So in here you would just put in your quarterback's passing yards, and then to the right of it, you would put in this formula. Now this formula is complicated. Um, it took me a while to read through all of the information on why this works and how it works. You can find this in Andrew Mack's book. You can also find this at realstatistics.com. Uh, it's real-statistics.com. The information can be found there. Um, so you're gonna go ahead and copy and paste this all the way down. All right, so this information is gonna go in there. You're gonna have an alpha and a beta again, right? Now in here, this formula is referencing the alpha and the beta. Now when you're first doing this, you can put this in however you want. I'm just gonna say 200 and I'm gonna put this to two. And you're gonna notice that these numbers are all shifting around and changing because they are formulas. So once you have this set, right, you're gonna come in, put in your passing yards, put in this formula. You're gonna just set the alpha and beta to whatever you would like. It doesn't matter right now because we're gonna use Excel to find the better fit. And then you're going to sum this column. So where it says LL, you're gonna sum all of these values. And then below, you're gonna put in this formula where for the MLE, we're gonna say F4 times the LN of F3 minus F3 times LN of F2 plus F5. So you're just gonna put that formula in here. And again, these numbers can be you know, whatever you wanna put in there and you're gonna see stuff shifting around. So now that that's done, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pretend that we're starting from the beginning. So again, I'm just gonna put in 180 and I'll put three for the beta, right? I don't know what the alpha or what the beta are. And again, they're gonna deal with the scale and shape of a Weibull distribution. And a Weibull is a very flexible distribution um, that can take many different forms when you look at the curves of what it looks like. So those charts can have a lot of different curves and changes to the way that they look, which is why it's so useful. It's very flexible. So you're gonna go into data and come up to solver. Let me drag solver onto the screen. So here in solver, what are we gonna try and set as our objective? Well, we're gonna set the MLE as our objective. We're gonna try and maximize that thing. The changing values we're gonna say are gonna be F2, which is alpha, and F3, which is beta. Now in here, I said that you wanna make sure that F2 and F3, so alpha and beta, are greater than or equal to 
0 0.01. I believe in Andrew Mack's book, he puts it at zero. Um, I put it at 0 0.01 because I don't want it to be able to reach zero. So I just went for a low number that's slightly above zero because the equal to is what worried me. So once that's in there and you have that set up, you're gonna hit solve. Solver's gonna crank through what it thinks is gonna fit best and then it's gonna offer up my solutions. If you get this gray thing, it's just because of the memory space for visual, so don't worry about it. You can hit okay. It all snaps back just like that. So what it did was it said, all right, you have the LN of all of these values here, right? All the logs of these. So then you're gonna come over here and I'm gonna try and adjust the alpha and the beta to make sure that it maximizes the MLE. Now what that does is it's gonna say, I have to change alpha, I have to change beta to improve this number. So now that that has happened, we can actually use a formula, which is the Weibull distribution formula within Microsoft Excel to come up with a probability of it being equal to or less than a certain number. So in here, I have the Weibull.dist and I put 450 as my X, right? This is gonna be the 450 that's referencing the game yardage here. F3 is the beta, F2 is the alpha, and I set this to true. Now in here, Excel is saying that the second value needs to be the alpha and the third number needs to be the beta. Uh, when you read on real statistics, um, it actually says that you need to inverse those. When I tried to do it this way with the alpha and the beta, I was getting a lot of really weird numbers not working at all or making sense. So don't worry about it. This is what you're gonna wanna do. Just follow this method and it was working out pretty well. So, and again, you want true. So this is saying you're gonna do cumulative which means we're gonna snap the line on the 450 yards and we're gonna to go to the left. This says that there's a 96.8% chance that this is not going to go above 450 yards in a single gain. Um, so if you wanted to actually see this converted, you would just say one minus this number, right, for your over. So here we'll just say under, and this one will say over. So this has a 3% chance to go over. Now over here, what I did was I took a formula that you can use to kind of like reverse engineer things, right? So I'm reverse engineering this formula here, the Weibull distribution, using this. So this way I can do checks and balances. So I'm gonna go ahead and say the alpha and then the beta are both within this formula. And then I put in my um, probability here, right? Which I took from here. So I can even just say this number. And then that way we know that it's still working and we didn't you know, fudge a number in here. You can reverse engineer what that number is, right? So here, I'm gonna go ahead and pass it in and say it's 450. Here, I'll be able to see it. Now, if we wanted to make this a little bit more dynamic, we'll just put it here. And we're just gonna say yards for a nice little visual. So if we're gonna say they're gonna throw over 350 yards within any game, any player will throw over 350 Right, we have a 70% chance to the under, almost 30% chance to the over. And here you can see that it is evaluating it properly because we're bouncing back in the probability using our numbers and evaluating it here. So if these two numbers do not line up when you do this, something's wrong with your formula. That's why I like having this here. It's for checks and balances. Again, if you wanna you know, hit pause on the video to see these formulas, I would recommend doing that. So this is the Weibull, and for those that are curious what Weibulls can look like, I'm gonna go ahead and just put in a graphic here. Um, so this is from the Real-Statistics website, right? So as you can see, the Weibull distribution can take a lot of different forms just depending upon what beta and alphas there are. So in here, right, beta 0.4, you can see this curve here. In the beta 1.0, it goes here. Uh, beta 5.0 is causing this. Uh, the beta 2 has this different curve, right? So things can vary greatly with the Weibull depending upon how this information is set up. And when you're doing this, you always want to make sure that the alpha and betas are scaled within your data set, right? So if this was all maybe yards per pass attempt, I wouldn't put like 400 as my starting point for my alpha. You want to take, you know, either the average or a number close to what's happening in here. That way solver can work quickly and come to a more rapid solution. So we're gonna go ahead and look at the log normal, which is just in another sheet. So log normal, you're gonna use this when you have um, high variance within your information, right, within the data that you have. 
Um, and you're also gonna wanna see whether or not this makes sense to use. Typically you want a skew very close to zero when you're doing this. And the log values of your passing information or whatever stat you're using, if I were to chart this, I wanna see this looking like a nice normal distribution with a bell curve, or at least very close to it. Um, that's when you'd wanna use the log normal. So in this scenario, you're gonna see that this doesn't fit perfectly. Um, it does give you a concept of guidance as far as if you're close to it, but I think the Weibull is far more useful in this kind of a um, bet type or statistic usage. So you wouldn't necessarily use the log normal here. You'll see that here in a moment. Um, but again, this is a great way to do a sanity check to make sure, hey, is my Weibull actually working properly? And if so, great. If not, maybe I need to reevaluate it because log normal is saying something different. Again, you always wanna have multiple ways to view something to make sure that you're actually reviewing the data properly. So in here we have the same uh, yards passing information. Now over here we have LN, right? So we're just doing LN of this one. So we're taking the log of this number. Go back to Weibull real quick. Whereas here we have this complicated formula, log normal. It's just a nice little equals LN and of that yardage. Now you're gonna go ahead and do that for all of your numbers going all the way down. We have our mean or our average, and I'm just taking the average here of the log. And then I'm gonna take the standard deviation of the log. Now here, the probability, this is where it gets nice and easy. The probability is going to be equal to log norm dot dist. We're gonna pass in the yardage. So here we're passing in 450. You're gonna pass in your mean of your logs, which is right here. You're gonna pass in your standard deviation of your logs, which is right here and I set cumulative to true. Again, we're snapping the line on 450 and looking at everything below it. So this is gonna say there is about a 94% chance, 94.5% chance that it will go 450 or under. So if we wanted to evaluate this for the over, you would just again say equals one minus this number, All right? So it says there's about a 5.5% chance that it could go to the over of 450. Now, again, basic model, right? We're just looking at only passing yards. We're not taking into account weather. We're not taking into account players. We're not taking into account defenses or where it's at in the season. We're not looking at things like totals or spreads or money lines, right? All that information can be modified into something like this. So you can either do this as a nice quick gut check to make sure you think your numbers are gonna align. You then would also wanna bake in other things that would be modifiers to the passing yards here and then go ahead and run your evaluations. So that is one way to do this and you can reverse engineer some of that information using passing yards and historical game info. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and first check the skew, skew of this information. Again, we want close to zero. Now right now we're getting negative 0.06. So it, it's not that bad. Now the negative is gonna kind of imply that we have longer fatter tails, but um, there's no major impact from that. This isn't a major number where I'm gonna panic and worry about those numbers. Um, again, the longer and the fatter tails, I don't think are gonna have a high impact at this point. So the other thing that you can do to try and check for this is you can go ahead and highlight your column of your logs, go up into insert, you're gonna insert a histogram, okay? And then you're gonna come over to format, and then I'm going to say chart area, I'm gonna switch it to the horizontal axis. I'm gonna format my selection. This little pop out drawer is here. Number of bins, I'm just gonna move this up to about 30. I'm just gonna say 30. So bins are just, again, these columns, right? You can either change the bin width by setting actual values yourself. Um, sometimes that takes too much time. So I'll just go ahead and set it to 30. And then we can look at the data here. Does this look like a normal bell curve? Mm, not really to me, right? We don't see a normal bell curve shape to this. Um, you you sl see a slight one, right? Right in here, kind of like you have these little odds and ends that are popping out, obviously. But you see a slight bell curve there. But, you know, between this not being a really clean bell curve, this being not closer to zero, um, I probably wouldn't use the log normal for finding a bet like this. But again, this is a good gut check because here it's saying there's a 94% probability to go to the under and a five and a half to go to the over. If we check against our Weibull, right? And let's actually change this back to 450. 
right, we have a 96% chance to the under with about a 3% chance to the over. So we can go back here and then again, we'll just do one more check, 350. It says 74% chance to the under. If we change this to 350, 70% chance, right? So here we're going from a 74 down to a 70. So about a 4% swing between these. Again, these are great ways to try and evaluate between the two. All right, so that is the Weibull and log normal distributions. Again, Weibull can be used for a ton of different things depending upon how you want to use it. Using an alpha and the beta allows you to really shape and curve this, and it's a continuous distribution, which makes it great for things like yardage. And it's really flexible and malleable, so you can adjust it how you would. Now, I would suggest adding in weather information, defensive information, player injury information, uh, using totals and spreads to try and figure out actual yardage for an upcoming game. Things like that would improve this kind of a model for making these predictions. You also can look at the season long information, right? Not just historical, but take the historical, project out what you think they're gonna do in each game, and then maybe this bet is a value. Now, like I did say, the log normal is only really, really useful when you have a skew close to zero and that you have a wide range of variance within your data set. So the higher the standard deviation or the variance, the closer to zero with the skew, the better log normal is going to be. Now, in this example, log normal was possibly going to be used, but you would prefer to probably use the Weibull for this. As usual, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, feel free to drop them down below and I will respond to you as fast as I can. If you do like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That way it pushes it to the top of the YouTube algorithm and lets other sports bettors learn this information as well. If you like the content that I provide on this channel, feel free to subscribe. That way you're notified as soon as the next video is available. If you'd like to reach me and talk to me about this further or other things about sports betting or modeling, you can reach me on X at wagered on tilt or you can reach me in the unabated discord as the T. So that is gonna be it for me today. Until next time, happy wagering.